Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. Today is the day. Today is video number 36 in the EL1 Mini Lathe build series. And today we're going to put this thing, I'm going to put this thing all together and I'm going to spin the chuck by hand. It's not under power. It's not powered by the steam engine that I did. It's not powered by any RC car motors or any external force. I'm just going to spin it just to make sure everything clicks and pops and moves the way it should and I can promise you that it will because it just came out really nice I'm very pleased thank you to everybody that left comments thank you to all the viewers thank you to all the people that signed on to the patreon account the support I'm just flattered by the support and grateful as as you can possibly imagine thank you very much uh, to anyone that has watched these videos and hasn't subscribed yet ah what does it take hit the subscribe button 36 videos, half an hour a piece. Eh, you know, that's 1,500 hours by the time you're done doing the math. 50, 60 segments per video, probably 2,000 raw segments stitched together to do this 36 video series. And each one of the videos probably took between four and six hours to shoot, set up, machine, edit, post. So there's another 2,000 hours worth of effort. Anyway, I hope you enjoy what you see today. I certainly enjoy the little trinket that I got as my reward. Let's get to it. Check it out. The kit comes with an exploded detailed view drawing, which is great for reference at assembly. Behind the scenes, a mountain of jigs, fixtures, clamps, special tooling was required. 75 different pieces, multiples of each, totaling 133 individual parts. Keeping track of all the parts is a chore unto itself. Some are staged back in the box that the original kit came in for future reference. A variety of different sized taps, dies, stops, end mills, drills, and reamers. Standing by. The lathe kit is ready to assemble. Let's do it. Starting with the mini four jaw chuck. These are 1032 screws. That's approximately a five millimeter grub screw, set screw, about four millimeters long. Moving on to the tail stock. All these pieces need to go into one complete sub assembly. And for anybody that's going to say you should oil this stuff, well, it gets oiled on camera, off camera, but everything that goes together and moves will be oiled. Very much like a real machine, any dead center that's placed in this tailstock will automatically eject at the extent of the stroke. Back it off, it will pop it out. <clears throat> Moving on to the carriage and cross slide upper subassembly, the lead screw is installed first. These are small dowel pins to keep the graduated dial index segment from rotating as the lead screw turns. This is not on the print. This is an upgrade that I made along the way because I wanted dials on my machine. Each one of the small black lines you can see represents a one thousandth of an inch incremental shift in the cross slide as you turn the crank. These are 172 screws. And keeping track of small parts is really easy when you hang them from a paper clip. I 
I'm going to oil all the moving surfaces, roll it through for a nice test fit. Everything is glass smooth. Wipe away the excess oil, make sure nothing seeps all over the model and discolors the aluminum over time. Feels good. Miniature tool post installation, snug it up, move it along. Assembling the legs is pretty straightforward. Four 172 screws. Assembly is done from the bottom. Nothing critical here. I added four brass leveling feet to this particular model for adjustment and leveling of this lathe. Although it's not leveled at this time, you can see the screw holes in the bottom of each of these feet. This is a 540 internal thread that will allow me to clamp this down to the display base of my choice. In preparation for the installation of the carriage, light oil is applied to the bed. The installation of the apron is a different animal. I currently have a slave pin inside the worm gear right now that is holding the key that's inside the worm gear. This is a very delicate mechanism right here. Very sensitive and fussy to line up. The keyed shaft here is going to displace the slave pin, rotate to engage the key, and continue to pass through the worm gear and out the other side of the apron. You got to get that right on the first try. If that key pops out of place, it is a beast. Hanging the drive shaft and the apron on the face of the lathe has to be done ever so gently and take your time. Don't tighten anything down until you know everything is engaging, everything moves freely, and run the carriage through its range of motion left and right to assist in where these shaft hangers are positioned. From the bed out is a hard dimension, it's already set, and the only thing that you can do to affect the freedom of movement of the carriage is to have the apron cocked when it comes time to screw it down. Shaft collars are provided so you can set whatever you want to bump into those or just to retain the shaft. And looking at it from the top, you can see how the apron protrudes from the front. Mine was machined to line up flush. These will not be tight until I sh know for sure that everything is going to glide back and forth as intended. Once the apron is positioned, it is time to rotate the drive gear mechanism into position to contact the reverse gear mechanism previously installed. There's a little standoff. Line the standoff up with the slot in the arm. Install the screw and washer. Make sure it's gapped correctly and snug it down.
The shaft collars are secured in place just shy of the shaft hangers present on the face of the lathe. Make sure that the set screw that you're tightening down does not interfere with the keyway on the shaft. And for safety at a later date if you want to put flats on your shaft to accept the grub screw, set screw, it uh, probably wouldn't be a bad idea if you plan on taking this apart. You do not want to indent the shaft. Installation of the tailstock is next. Just make sure that the lower locking plate is hanging low enough to allow it to go into the tracks cut inside the bed. Line up the V's. Easier said than done, of course, <laughs> especially with a camera in your face. Make sure everything lines up, slide it on, lock it down. With the assistance of a couple of jeweler screwdrivers, I bring the nuts to snug. And I just happen to have a little miniature wrench that you may have seen me make to snug this down. That one is easily accessible because it's between the uprights. The one in the back is too close to the upright. It is to print, but it's too close to get the box around it. So we use the open end. There you go. Some final adjustments of the apron positioning. Roll it back and forth as you're tightening it down. You can see it's still just a little bit loose right there. Right over the hand wheel, you can see the gap start to change, but I'll get to that in a second. The four jaw chuck, I couldn't wait to see this. I changed the design of the spindle, so I have a positive collared section for the chuck and face plate to register against and a locating diameter inside. Never trust the thread for concentricity. In your designs or assemblies, don't just don't do it. Some final torquing of the shaft hangers on both ends. Ideally, with the headstock off, that would be the best way to do it. Run the carriage all the way down and back. Make sure everything lines up. It's all linear and axially aligned. Off you go. The main spindle gear is now secured to the spindle itself. You can see all the reverse gears, clusters, the lower gear mechanism is all working just fine. The chuck spins freely. End play and spindle movement is all adjustable. Engaging the power feed, watch the carriage move left to right or one direction and watch the, the hand wheel begin to move. There you go. With the chuck spinning forward right now, this would be considered reverse. The carriage is moving away from the chuck. That is completely adjustable. You select which way you want it to go and off it goes.
a final close-up look at the finished product. I am very pleased with the way this came out. I will put a link to this kit in the video description below if you're interested in purchasing one. Thank you all for watching very much. I appreciate you uh, taking the time. It's Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.